Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be using Unity's new official multiplayer solution to create a password protected room so your host can set a password and the clients that join have to enter the correct password to be able to connect to the server. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. As always, if you want access to the project files, there'll be a link down below to our GitHub repository. You can go ahead, download that and have a look through the project for yourself. To save us some time, I've already set some stuff up in the scene and that means we can focus more on the programming in this tutorial. So what we have here is we have the network manager, which the only thing I've changed on here is I've added the player prefab. And if we click on that, the player prefab, let's go into the scene view, is simply just a character I grabbed off Mixamo and it has an animator on it. It's not too important for the tutorial. It's just there so that when we hit play, we'll be able to have an idle animation for the player like so. And the important part about the player prefab is that it has the network object component. And this is how ML API identifies an object over the network. And this is used for objects that we need to sync and track from one client to another across the server. So let's get rid of the player from the scene. And just remember on the network manager, drag that into network prefabs and set that as the default player prefab. And then if I put this back in 2D mode, click on this background over here, we have this background on a canvas, and this is just to hold the UI where we enter our password. And we have these two buttons for hosting and starting as a client. And then one other thing is a disabled button down here, which I've zoomed in far too much there, is just a leave button so we can stop hosting or just leave the server as a client. And on the root of this is just an empty game object with a script called the password network manager and don't worry, it's basically empty right now. I just have these three methods that the buttons are hooked up to. And then these three fields that we reference the password input field so we can read the password, the password entry UI. So when we enter the server, we can turn this off and then the leave button so we can turn this on when we enter the lobby. And with these buttons, host, client and leave, you want to make sure these are hooked up to the buttons. So host is hooked up to host, client and leave. So let's turn off leave because that's meant to be off by default and zoom back out. So what we'll be using to implement the password protected lobby is something in ML API called connection approval. And there is a part for it on the docs and I'll be linking this down below. Just keep in mind that on the docs, there isn't really a full example. There's part of one here and a little bit more here, but you don't really get a full thing for this. And maybe in the future, there'll be a more fleshed out example of this but that's what I'm doing today. I'm creating a tutorial here that you can follow through from the start to the finish to have a password protected lobby. So now we're ready to start making it. Let's head back into Unity and just make sure on the network manager, we enable connection approval. And with this off, which it is by default, when someone tries to connect, they'll just join and your server will allow it. But by enabling this, you can write your own logic to say, uh, there's too many players on the server, don't let them connect or their password's wrong, don't let them connect or whatever else you can really make this logic be whatever you want. But in our example, we're just going to do password protection. And with this turned on now, let's head into our script. So let's start off in the host method. This is called when we hit the host button in the UI. And we want to, of course, start hosting. And the way you do this is network manager .singleton .start host. But if we just do that, and then for example, in the client, let's say we just did network manager .singleton .start client. This would work the same way as the hello world example does, where you just start and you let someone connect. But we want to add our own logic here for letting people connect. So on the line before we host, we can say here, network manager .singleton .connection approval callback, And this allows us to subscribe our own method with our own custom logic that determines whether someone should be approved to connect or denied. And let's call it the approval check. And let's use Visual Studio Code to do this for us. So we'll hit control period, generate the method, and I'll move it to the bottom. And this is the method where we write our custom logic. Now let's rename the arguments because they're just currently arg one, two, and three. We'll call the byte array connection data. So this will have our password in or whatever you decide to send. The ulong is this client's ID. So we'll call it client ID. And the uh, connection approved delegate is a callback. And inside this method, we need to actually call this callback and pass in some data, such as whether we should approve the player or the client, 
uh, where they should spawn, which prefab they should spawn in, what rotation they should spawn in with, all that kind of stuff goes in here. So what we should do in here before the callback is to determine is the password correct? And currently the password is a byte array, which is no good. We need it to be a string. So let's say here, string password is equal to, and we want to convert a byte array into a string. So we're going to use encoding dot ASCII dot get string. And by doing get string, you can pass in a byte array, so connection data, and that will convert the byte array back into a string. So now we know what password it is that they tried to send. So now let's make a bool, and this is whether we should approve the connection. So we'll call it approve connection. And this is equal to, and then we need to say here, does the password equal the expected password? So does the password they're sending us match the password input field dot text. So when I hit host, whatever password I've got in my input field is the one that we're expecting. So now we have this bool approved connection that's true or false based on whether the password is correct or incorrect. And now we can actually call the callback. And to know what to pass in here, if you mouse over this connection approved delegate, you can see the first thing is a bool whether we should spawn in a player for them. So this will be true. The second is the player prefab hash. Now, if you pass in null here, it will just use the default player prefab that we set in the network manager. So leave that null. Uh, the next thing is the approved bool. So we're just gonna pass in approved connection. Then we've got the position and rotation. So for us, if we pass that in as null, then it will just go for zero, zero, zero. So for now, we'll just go with null. And what this will do for us now is just say, when someone's connecting, if they have the correct password, spawn them in. And now, of course, we need the client to be able to send the password. So the way you do that is before you start client, you want to set the password. So network manager dot singleton dot network config dot connection data. This is where you set that connection data. And we want to set it equal to a byte array. So we need to take the string that's in our input field and convert it to a byte array because you can't just send the strings over the network, they need to be converted to bytes. So encoding.ascii, just like earlier, instead of get string, it's get bytes, and get bytes can take in a string. So password input fields dot text. And with just this, we actually have it all working. Of course, there's some more stuff we're going to do with leaving and the UI, but it does work. So if we head over to Unity, file, build and run, and then run it in the editor. I'll open up my build over here. And what we can do is we can set a password, let's say ABC and hit host. The UI will stay up, but we've started a server as a host. And then if I go over here and say AB, but don't put the C so I get the password wrong and hit client, doesn't work, doesn't connect. But if I edit the password and say ABC and hit client, it now connects. And you can see me uh, join the server and there's two players now. We're on top of each other and the UI is still up, but it does work. So back in the code, we want to hook up to some events, some logic where we can enable and disable UI when we connect to the server, disconnect from the server and those various things. So let's use the built-in private void start and private void on destroy. And what we can do here is we can say, we want to hook up to network manager dot singleton dot on server started plus equals and we'll make a method called handle server started and we want to do this for three different events so let's copy paste it three times we're doing on server started on client connected callback and on client disconnect callback and then handle client connected handle client disconnect Now let's make sure to unsubscribe from all of those in the destroy method. So we will change all the pluses to minuses down here. And I'm going to also add an if check before this, because when you stop playing in the editor and it tries to unsubscribe all these events, but the game has stopped completely. So the network manager has been destroyed. You actually get some errors. And whilst they don't actually cause any issues, it's always nice to avoid those errors. So let's say if network manager dot singleton is null, then just return. And then we need to actually now make these three methods. Now let's start with handle client connected. So we'll go down here 
private void handle client connected takes in a ulong client ID. Now this is called on the server every time a client joins. It's also called on the client side when they themselves join, but not when other people join. Now because we're running this game as a client, but we also have it so that we can host the game, we want to make sure it works for both. So we're going to say whenever a client connects, if that client ID is our ID, so network manager .singleton .local client ID, if it is us, then let's turn off the password entry UI by setting active false and turn on the leave button dot set active true. So we're effectively saying here, when we connect, turn this on and off. Now let's take this method, copy paste it, and just change it to be handle client disconnect. And then inside the logic here, we want to flip the false and true. So when we disconnect, we enter the password entry and we turn off the leave button because we've already left. Now there is an issue currently, but it is getting sorted. So by the time you watch this, it may have already been fixed. But right now, on client connected doesn't get called for the host when it's themselves that's connecting. So we need to make sure that we call that manually for now. So what we can do here is we can make this handle server started method. So let's do private void handle server started. And all we want to say is whenever a server is started, if it's running as a host, which is a server and a client, so if network manager dot singleton dot is host, so if we're running as a host, let's call manually handle client connected with our network manager dot singleton dot local client ID. So we make sure that um, ML API calls this for everyone else and we're calling it manually for ourselves as a host. This is just currently a workaround. And the leave method's looking a bit empty. So let's go up to the leave method. And let's say when we hit leave, if network manager .singleton is host, if we're the host, then let's stop hosting. Network manager .singleton .stop host. And when we stop hosting, we want to unsubscribe from the approval check. So doing the reverse. Let's paste that down here, change the plus to a minus. And then we can say, uh, else if network manager dot singleton dot is client, then we can say network manager dot singleton dot stop client. And in both these cases, when we hit the leave button, we also want to take this uh, password entry true, leave button false, and call it here regardless, because in both these cases, we are still a client. So we want to turn on the password entry and turn off the leave button when we leave. And one other thing we can do down in the approval check is pass in here the position and rotation we'd like to spawn in with. And in future tutorials, I'll do a much better version of this. For now, I'll just do a bit of messy hard coding so we can make it look nicer in the game. So what we'll do here is we'll say vector free spawn pos and quaternion spawn rot for rotation. And we'll pass those in. So spawn pos, spawn rot. And now we just need to set them. So what we can say is when someone connects, switch on the network manager dot singleton dot connected clients dot count. So this is how you find out how many people are currently connected. And we say when we're connecting, if there is currently one of a person, then we want to spawn in what position. And in my case, I've set it up so that I want the spawn position to be zero, zero, zero. And I want the spawn rotation to be Quaternion dot Euler 0, 180 degrees and 0 degrees. So if there's already one person in the game, I want these settings. Whereas, let's copy paste this. If there are two players in the game already, so I'm player three, then I want to spawn at an X of two and with a rotation of 225. And so this is happy. We need to make sure we give it a default value. So let's say vector 3.0 and the default value of a quaternion is quaternion.identity. And this accounts for clients joining, but the host themselves, which is a server and a client, doesn't actually have any of this code called because it's not going to check their password if they're the one setting it. So we can scroll up and where we call start host, you can actually pass these things in. We can say new vector three minus two zero zero. And then quaternion.euler 0, 135 degrees 
zero degrees. So now when the host joins, they'll spawn in at this position and this rotation, because they're always the first player. Whenever other clients join, they'll spawn in with these positions and rotations. Now this isn't foolproof. Uh, if player three, or sorry, player two, was to leave and rejoin, they'd be in the position of player three, because they'd now be the third player joining. So that isn't taken into consideration here, but it really doesn't matter, because it's just for a visual indication of three players joining. Let's go back into Unity. We'll go File, Build and Run, and we'll see it all in action. So we'll do this with the three builds here. Let's pick one of them to be the host, let's say the one at the bottom, and we'll set the password to be password. We'll hit host. And over here, I'll try joining with the wrong password. Let's just type some random stuff in and hit client. Nothing works. Same over here. Doesn't work. But if I say password and hit client, it now joins. And you see them both here. It spawned in the position and rotation for player two. And for player three, password, hit client. And they join as player three. And of course, leaving works too. So if I decide on player two, which is up here, to leave, the middle person will now be gone. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Share the video with anyone you think that would find it useful. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Mac, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Beardodai, Benjamin Hilda, Cat from Garfield, Coulter, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, Jake Nixon, Yaris Letter, Casey, Katinkamom, Malvin, Mike Troop, Rack. Sam Marcus, Ulfgrim, Andrew Williams, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. You could help us out by following or checking any of those out. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.